Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 24th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And hackers keep mixing up old evasion techniques in order to, well, hopefully uh, find something new that uh, will not get detected uh, by anti-malware. And Xavier came across an interesting trick here that one particular attacker used, and that's sort of a mix of Excel 4 macros and uh, Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA. So Excel 4 macros is the older way how to do macros in Excel. These days you typically would use uh, VBA, but of course Excel 4 macros are still supported. And we talked in the past about how they're also still being used uh, in malicious code. In this particular case, which starts as your usual uh, DocuSign uh, mal spam, a uh, visual basic uh, macro is actually then used to create an Excel 4 macro that will then download additional malicious code. And that's the actual malware that is then being uh, scheduled to run automatically. So the downloader has these two components, first VBA, and the VBA creates an Excel 4 macro that then does the actual uh, downloading. In addition uh, to added complication, not really sure how much that'll do in order to throw off uh, anti-malware, but then of course uh, they don't necessarily need to throw off all anti-malware. If they uh, can throw off a couple of products, this may increase their chances of success sufficiently to make the additional complexity of the attack worthwhile. Researchers at Eclipsium found an interesting vulnerability in Windows platform binary tables or WPBT. Uh, this uh, feature allows uh, hardware like motherboards and the like to supply the operating system Windows with drivers in order to interface with the specific hardware. The feature has had a little bit of controversial history because essentially it does allow, for example, OEMs uh, to add additional uh, software uh, into your operating system that is pretty difficult uh, to remove, essentially sort of rootkits, sometimes also being uh, used in order to, for example, implement theft protection and the like, due to the fact that these drivers are very difficult uh, to remove. Now, in order to mitigate the risk that comes from loading code on boot or actually sort of a pre-boot here, uh, these uh, drivers uh, need to be digitally signed. Well, according to Eclipsium, while the signature is validated, it's not actually checked if the signing certificate expired or has been explicitly revoked. So an attacker who had access to a certificate uh, would then be able to still create these drivers and essentially install rootkits on your system. Typically, this would require physical access or maybe access uh, to motherboards and the like during the production process. But in some cases where uh, the uh, firmware of the particular hardware could be updated by the user, it is possible to even include uh, these uh, malicious drivers later remotely. No patch available at this point and all Windows versions starting with Windows 8 are affected. And about a week ago, Apple released an update for these uh, two critical already exploited uh, vulnerabilities. Now, at the time, Apple released the update for uh, current versions of iOS and macOS. Today, Apple also released uh, the same patch, also patching the same two vulnerabilities for iOS 12 and macOS Catalina. So this should cover users of older devices that are not able to support iOS 14 or 15. And then we have yet another story related to digital signatures and well, how hard they are to pass correctly. Uh, this one comes from Neil Maeta from uh, the uh, Google uh, Threat Analysis Group. And apparently some threat actors are using uh, malformed uh, digital signatures, in particular for Windows binaries that apparently are not parsed correctly by some software. And as a result, uh, this uh, software then uh, may identify uh, the executable as 
properly digitally signed and may not consider it malicious as a result. The blog post doesn't point out uh, which particular products or so are vulnerable, it just states that OpenSSL does reject this encoding and considers it invalid, so essentially it deals uh, with it correctly. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and uh, talk to you again on Monday. Bye.